Welcome again. In this session, we are reading John chapter 6, verses 22 through to 24. The people seek Jesus. On the next day, the multitude that stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there except the one in which his disciples had embarked, and that Jesus hadn't entered with his disciples into the boat, but his disciples had gone away alone. Now, this is very remarkable because in the last session we were reading and we were talking about how Jesus walked on the water and how powerful that was. So not only the disciples witnessed this miracle, but the multitude, the general public saw at least a portion of it, saw at least circumstantial evidence of it in that they said, wait a second, Jesus is coming off the boat with his disciples, and there's only one boat. But when we just saw his disciples leave on the other side, and Jesus wasn't with them, and and there's no other boat. What happened here? Okay, so once again, there's like many witnesses here that there was something very supernatural that happened. Let's go on. However, boats from Tiberias came near to the place where they ate the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Remember, we just came from the story not too long ago of Jesus feeding the 5,000, and the, as I would say, the 5,000 plus, okay? More than 5,000 actually, but 5,000 men. Verse 24, When the multitude therefore saw that Jesus wasn't there, nor his disciples, they themselves got into the boats and came to Capernaum, seeking Jesus. Now, these people saw something mighty happen, okay? They, I'm not sure that any of them actually understood what happened. All I know is they were, you know, just completely bewildered what happened here, okay? Um, and so they knew that there was something very, very special about Jesus, and they were drawn to Jesus. And so they came seeking Jesus. So I want to end this session on this note. The power of seeking Jesus, the power of seeking God is extraordinary. I was at a, a church meeting years ago, and there was a, a, a guest speaker that was talking about the, the hunger or the thirst of some people in, in, other, in other nations. And uh, they were talking about how people would more or less almost trample people just to get to where they believed was where the power of God was or where the anointing was or, you know, where they could be touched by God. And uh, the pastor or the preacher that was speaking during this, this service was talking so much about pressing in to God's presence, pressing in, seeking God, pressing into Jesus, seeking Jesus, pressing in. And it, it, as he was going on, in his sermon, the atmosphere was just charged. As the sermon went on, I, I got more and more on the edge of my seat, okay? And all of a sudden, like it was it was just so uh, powerful. All of a sudden, I, I felt like just jumping up and running forward. And uh, and just as I, I was about to do that, I saw a few other people do that. So I jumped up and I ran forward. And I noticed as I was running forward, I, you know, I, Hundreds of other people actually did the same thing. And so uh, I had a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful experience with God. One of the most powerful experiences with God I've ever had in my life. And so it's very, very important to have a hunger for God, to have a hunger for Jesus, to have a hunger for the scriptures, to have a hunger for truth, to have a hunger to read and understand the scriptures that God gave us, okay? It's very, very, very important. That is the motivating factor. That is the life behind your walk with God. Make sure you have it. Once again, thanks again for listening, and God bless you as you seek Him with all your heart. That, that's a big statement, by the way. Seek Him. Seek Him with all your heart. That means more than just wishing, like throwing a penny in a wishing well or something like that. That is 
very intense. Seeking God with all your heart. If you seek him with all your heart, you will find him. Thanks again. God bless you.